up, everybody? How you doing today? So I gotta, I gotta be honest with you. I'm just gonna be completely honest with you. I mean, you guys all know me. I don't really normally get nervous, but I haven't done this in a couple months. I'm a little nervous. You can believe that? I'm a little nervous. We'll see how it goes. Probably get right back into the rhythm shortly. But anyway. Welcome to the 27th edition of the round table. Today's technique is shield and sword, shield and sword. Now, I will tell you that uh, we're a little light today. Uh, it is unfortunately a sad day here in America, you know, uh, but it's also a sad day here uh, for the brotherhood. Unfortunately, Steve Stewart couldn't make it because he had a death in the family. So Steve, our condolences to you. Uh, I really uh, I wish you all the best. Uh, and then Sabura uh, can't make it as well. Uh, he had a, a family emergency and had to jump in the car. So uh, don't have too much information there. But uh, I hope everything's going all right. So anyway, it's time to get started. Let's roll. So here we go. Shield and Sword is the technique. We have two awesome presenters today. We have two awesome presenters. First from uh, Tucson, Arizona, with over 25 years in the art this woman is very well respected in the art, one Miss Rebecca Knight. Now, for me, she's a new friend. I can't wait to see her in action, all right? I can't wait to see what she has to offer. Sean, her husband, was a guest last time. He had an awesome presentation, and I doubt that this one is going to disappoint. This is going to be good stuff. And then number two is Gail Waller. And this is funny how this works. We always seem to have a new friend of mine and an old friend of mine. Now, when I say old friend, I mean Gail and I have been friends for 30 years, Gail Waller, you guys know her. She's on practically every month anyway because she's working with her husband, Mark, who we all know and love. But today, you know, we decided we've never done like women-only presenters. So these were the two that we thought would be perfect for that day. So let's get started, and I'm the first one to go. So Shield and Sword, uh, before I get into talking about Shield and Sword, I uh, when you're doing your tempo techniques, one of the things that we know we see – uh, is the similarities in movement. The similarities in movement, you know, that's one of the fun things to do. This technique is that technique. Like my standard go-to, you have triggered salute, right? And then if you take triggered salute and you flip it upside down, you have gripping talent, right? You have all the movements the same. If you switch your feet, you have triggered salute and what's called glancing salute where you change the footwork around. Okay, you have a lot of those techniques, you know, that have this footwork here and here and here and off and out and all that, you know. So there's a lot of similarities in movement. Some of the other ones are a little difficult to see. Like one that uh, I, I learned from Joe Polanco, which I thought was pretty cool, was calming the storm and detour from doom, right? So calming the storm goes one, two, three. If you take detour from doom and isolate the footwork, it looks like this, one, two, three. So it's the same thing, only you add the footwork, but the same motion is there, right? It's the same motion. So now let's talk about shield and sword. Shield and sword is a cool technique, and this is pure speculation on my part. Maybe others of you know this and can confirm it for me, but I think the purpose of shield and sword is, is to give you a category completion for the rule uh, backhand, forward bow, front hand, neutral bow, right? Now, the technique that mimics, uh, that shield and sword mimics is parting wings. So I drop back neutral bow, and then I shift to my forward bow. When I shift to my forward bow, I'm using my backhand. When I shift to my neutral bow, I'm using my front hand. And then when I shift back to my forward bow, I'm using my backhand. But now when I do shield and sword, what am I going to do? I'm going to switch my feet. So instead of this, I'm going to do this. Little different, but you're following me here, okay? Now what am I gonna do? I'm gonna do a front hand neutral. Oh no, it's the same thing, but on a different angle. I'm sorry, I got confused here. So what you're gonna do now is we're off angle. We're gonna go front hand neutral, and then we're gonna go back hand forward, and then we're gonna go front hand not neutral, but same position before we kick. But the difference is your opponent is displaced. All right? One, your guy's in front of you. The other, the guy is off to the side of you because it's a defense against a left step through punch. So when the guy pushes me in parting wings, I pull it away. One, two, three, four. Now, if I switch my feet 
and I do parting wings, turn it into an elbow, into a middle knuckle fist, okay? And then I switch around here, it's the same motion repeated. The only difference now is your opponent is here versus off to the side here, which adjusts our targets. So one last time, parting wings, I'm not even gonna go into exactly how to do shield and sword. I'll let the other guys do that. I just wanted to give you my little thought about this. Parting wings is here, one, two, three, four. Shield and sword, you switch your feet, one, two, three, four, and then you add the kick. So anyway, that's all I have to say about that. So let's take a look and see. All right, our next presenter, hailing from Kennett Square, Pennsylvania. He is the husband of one of our presenters who will be presenting later today, Mr. Mark Lawler. Hello, everybody. Nice to see you. So today, uh, technique is shield and sword. Um, I'm going to start by talking about some of you guys might remember back in the day doing the, the Tracy system. Uh, the, tech, the technique was really, really super uh, boxy. And um, <clears throat> it's for the step through left. You would step in and basically into this position with an extended outward block. Let me lower this. When you would come into the horse, you'd come in, you would come into a horse on the chop. Okay, real strong forward bow on the elbow. And uh, that, that type of thing is true with a lot of the Kempo techniques of, of that system or time period, if you will. So obviously as time goes on or went on, we put our checks in, we started to use the formula uh, for, of fighting in the technique. So um, let me just share with you how I like to perform shield and sword. I'm going to call up my friend Zach Miller. Zach, if you would come stand here. Okay, let's give him a salute, Zach. All right, so I'm going to have Zach start with the step through left punch. Now, we're going to begin with the rico ricochet block, which is going to come into the face. Now, I'm going to take the eye as I shuffle in and rip and my extended outward block goes here. And the other thing that we want to do, like thundering hammers or flashing wings, is we want the leg driving in, okay? Now, the hand sword, <clears throat> we want to come back with a path, path of action. We don't want to just be here. We want to come in this way. And once again, I keep doing this, I want you guys to watch my right knee. Okay, I'm going to drive it into him. Okay. Now, if I crumple them like that, that's obviously going to change what I do next. Everybody knows that, right? Reactionary posture position, change into something else. So I'm just going to have Zach upright himself here. <laughs> so, I mean, if you drive him with this, that could produce that result. So next, again, we have another leg check. And as we do, okay, we're coming in with that elbow and we're gutting with that. Now comes the hammer fist. And, you know, many people treat this with a roundhouse kick to the opposite kidney. Beautiful, fine. A lot of people, we, we learn the roundhouse kick to the leg. I'm going to put the roundhouse kick to the leg on the end of what I'm going to do now, which is going to be basically to graft into circling destruction. I'm going to move up. I keep having to do this. I'm going to move up the circle and I'm going to use one of these sickle chops onto a trapezius. So uh, from the elbow, I'm going to come and I'm going to drop this down. Reach around to the face and grip. No, well, obviously now I can't do the downward round. I did, but if you just turn that's right there. We all know any one of these moves in the technique, if you do it right, has the ability to create an injury. Okay, so, you know, we work in these sequences, we're out there in hypothetical land. So let's say if you just back up from this after. If I rip his face and he's still here, I'm going to do a roundhouse shin kick right up into here. Yeah. I want to go right to the inside of that knee joint and uh, dispatch him that way. 
So anyway, you're behind the guy. Why not just stay there? Circling destruction, backbreaker. Um, I don't see the point of running back around him. To me, I'm going to get a hold of him at that point or, or do something like that. So that's five minutes. Thank you, everybody. And I uh, will look forward to seeing my, the ladies perform today. Rebecca, looking forward to seeing you. I know Gail is. And, um, back to you, Dan. All right. Thank you very much. Mr. Lawler, quick question. That gentleman's name was Zach. Is that correct? Zach Miller. Zach Miller. Zach Miller, you did an excellent job of demonstrating something we all know, which is what it's like to get hit by Mark Lawler. Nice job, pal. <laughs> Ask Brian. I think Brian's head's still thinner. Did I hit somebody? Back. That's an old joke from back in the day. <laughs> all right. Our next presenter, all the way from Spain. Now, recently, some photos just came up from the uh, from the dinner honoring Frank Trejo, where uh, myself and and Sabora we got to meet Lorenzo, and uh, we had so much fun uh, that weekend that it's been too long, Lorenzo. We got to do it again, everybody. Lorenzo. Hello, everybody. Hello. It's a pleasure to be there another time. Now I am in my village in Barcelona, and uh, I, I will try to, to explain uh, a couple of things about the technique, okay? Uh, of course, it's a pleasure to have the lady in the campo, so uh, it's for me the pleasure that uh, both uh, are here in the same party with us, okay? So I will, uh, I will speak three things about the technique, okay? One, about the completely category, okay? Remember that the technique you go with the red side, with my red left, and in forward, okay? So you need to think in that we have different techniques to do this. You can, you have the break maker, you go with the left, with the right, left, to out of the attack, okay? Attack in the direction. Direct, direct, direct. You are going to do this, okay? The second one, maybe you have target salut, the You are inside. Then you can, you have this technique, okay? Which way, Puhamen? You are doors. You are in the middle, okay? Then some people do the technique, ganchi izquierda. Silang, okay? You have this one, you are in this way. And now you are, ataca. You are in this way, okay? So we need to think about the category if you want to work in this way, okay? Another thing that the way I see the people doing the technique is that when we are doing this, they don't use the first uh, forward or the first principle of forward, okay? You can hit me. All people do this. Now you lose the contractor. When you go in front, you need to do this, okay? No only this you need to do this <laughs> because when somebody hit you and you do this move you cancel him okay so it's very important when we do it in this way i need to do this okay this is the where we learn this move remember long two you are this and this is contractor in the place <clears throat> okay so you need to to train in the form to applying the technique, okay? This is important. For me, it's very important because when you start, you can't tell all. Now you can work as you want to do, okay? It's very important for me this time. And this technique, I like this technique because I can teach the block. The block, the move, the basic move of the block in the technique, okay? Check, when we are doing this, okay? This is the block. But this technique, if you analyze this technique, you are doing this block, this block, this block, double factor, and this block. Okay? Check. The first move, outward block. You need to chamber. So you have the second block, outward block. Okay? Now, the inward block. Okay? Now you are doing double factor. When you are doing double factor, you do the elbow, you cross and you do double factor, okay? Now you hit here and you hit here, okay? 
Okay? So thinking, when you are doing the technique, we need to go to the basis move. Move. If you go to the basis move, then you can do the technique better. Okay? So for me, it's, it's all. Then I come to you another time. Uh, of course, it's a pleasure to be in this party and we start the year, okay? I hope that all people have uh, a very health and uh, with the COVID, uh, all people, uh, I hope that all people are okay and right. And we need to push and we need to continue to work all camp, okay? So then I come to you boss. Thank you, thank you so much. Man, I absolutely love the way you think, Lorenzo. I really, really do. That's that. I, I mean, I've known Shield and Sword forever. And then when you started to go into there's the outward, there's the inward, here's the dog. I never thought of that before. That is spectacular. Thank you very much. All Thank right. Thank you so much. So. Moving right along, moving right along. So you'll notice that the name at the bottom of the screen is not going to say the typical Montester Noir because for some reason, these guys wanted to challenge us and see if we can handle this much good looking on one screen. Ladies and gentlemen, live from Tony Capone's garage, Monte. <laughs> Salute everybody. It's a great honor for uh, us uh, to be with you today. Uh, before we start, we always say salute to all the frontline workers and all the hard work they're going through right now. Uh, my brother, Tony Capone, together we've been in Kimpo for more than 30 years. In martial arts, I know he's been in it, and as uh, I have more than 50 years. Uh, we're, we're looking at all two old visas here. So, uh, with the technique today, uh, shield and sword, uh, it's exactly what it represents, which is a shield. You know, if you can imagine you can have a shield and then there's the weapon, okay? For me to make it more practical on the street, uh, your immediate reaction is to protect your face. So as the person steps in, so you just protect your face and you create or, or automatically, this will be the block and this will be the strike. And then from there you go in. So for me, let's uh, we're gonna do this angle right there. So as he's coming in, I I check, okay. And from there, this hand is already right for the grab. Look how this this is checked and right there too, okay. And then immediately there's a strike, a strike land to here, and I sink my fingers as soon as I hit into his neck to bring him in into the elbow strike. And then this will check me down for me to hit him so I can do the, the kick, the round house kick, hook kick, side kick, and the back kick. Okay? So we'll do it one more time. So as he's coming in, please. See. Kick, kick, and the back kick. Uh, we can do a little bit different angle so you can do the rotation. Oh, uh, no, no, this will be it. So as he's coming in, there's uh, the strike. That's not showing up. And hit. So this, you see this? That's what I sink my fingers right in his neck. If he, or if I can grab, I, if I can grab his suit or grab his skin and pull him for me as I do that strike. Okay? And then this will set me up. Immediately, there is the kick. Hit, hit, and hit. Okay? I'm going to let my brother Tony do it, <laughs> have a chance to uh, do it on me. All right? I'm just going to do the face. Okay. So you switch with you? Yeah, so now you're all on So as I come in, please. Yeah. Uh. Boys can move, can't they? Gotta love it. That's more set. 60, set 67, 68, oh, 68, 68 and 66. Years young. Years young. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. 
You guys are the uh, true meaning of the OG. Very nice. All right. Up next, the scribe hailing from the other side of our great state of Pennsylvania, my man, Mr. Michael Miller. Hey, everybody. All right. So, it's the building story. I'll just go over. I'm, I'm not going to do the uh, extension. I'll just go over the base technique and give you a couple ideas and show you the way that I do it. Um, but originally, obviously, shield and sword, we have our shield and we have our sword. We all know that. We, you know, everybody's pretty much covered that. Um, so traditionally, we would come in here, 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 and then we would come up and we'd fire. A lot of people, you know, some people say it's with a middle knuckle coming across. Some people say it's a raking hammer fist. Um, and then you can do your, you know, your roundhouse kick, which generally written to the kidney. Basically, you do that first shot to the, it would be the left kidney. You do the second shot to the right kidney. Um, now, first off, the people that do the middle knuckle, I don't, I'm totally against that, especially on this plane, because it's a circular plane and we have nothing protecting our knuckle. So if I were to hit something here, that knuckle is going to be, going to be gone. You know, I don't want to do that. Try hit. You want to hit. You want to. You want to test this theory. Hit a heavy bag without gloves. Go up to a heavy bag. Do your little middle knuckle thing that you want to do, and hit that damn heavy bag as hard as you can, and watch what happens to your knuckle. All right. You're not gonna have a middle finger for a while. Now, however, there is a way to work that a little better, but it would have to be on a vertical plane. Uh, if you learn how to take this finger. And you put it down like this. See how I'm doing this? Now I can I can work with it that way, but even but I still can't work with it this way. Anyway, when I do on that, I do a hook punch. You know, I like to hook the kidney. And then the kick that I do, I don't like going into the, the other kidney because what I've found in training is that sometimes their elbow's in the way. So you're trying to kick them in the kidney and you hit them in the elbow, and you know, the elbow usually beats the foot, you know what I mean? Uh so for me, I prefer to take that to the, the back of the knee like you would do in uh, repeating mace, you know. So anyway, so the way I do this, I like to do a double parry instead of the traditional shield and sword. Oh, and before I get into that real quick, um, the traditional shield, you know, the traditional one where you do the shield and you do the sword. If you look at those moves, it's, it's the last two moves of five swords in the base technique. And it's also the first two moves in uh, Charging Ram. So if you look at five swords, right, and I go here and I do all this, here it is, here, here. So same idea. Uh, you look at Charging Ram and you go, oh, here, here. Same idea, first two moves. Um, but I like to do it with a double parry, and I like to insert this slice. And I, I saw Mr. Lawler put the slice in there as well. Insert that slice. So you do the double parry and you fire that slice. Then you do your chop. Then you come in with the elbow. And then I like to add to load. Might as well take something with us every time we cross the center line. So I'm going to slice again to load, come up. I'm going to fire the hook and then I'm going to fire that roundhouse kick right into the back of the knee. Okay, that's the way I like to do it. So one more time, back up a little bit. So I go. Double parry slice, okay? Chop, elbow, slice again with our Chinese check. Move up the circle, hook punch, roundhouse kick. That's the way I like to do it. Um, <clears throat> so I think I had something else to say, but damn, I, 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 I think I forgot about it. But anyway, um, oh, yeah, now I remember. Um, look at repeating mace. Repeating mace. We're doing that outward parry, and we're doing punch, back knuckle kick, very similar. So what you could do here if you wanted, you could add that back knuckle. So even if you did the traditional version of this, 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 you could fire that back knuckle in there before you throw the kick. And then, of course, I mean, that's just using the equation formula, right? Also known as the formulation equation. Uh, all the, the eight things you can do uh, at any point. But anyway, I think that I think that's probably my five minutes. Thank you, guys. Back to you, Mr. Mech. 
Thank you very much, Mr. Miller. Now, being that Michael is a writer, I have to use a word, a big word. He's a pugilist. He's a pugilist, right? And that's why you see he switched that into that. You can't resist, right? You got it loaded up there. Bam, you got to fire that hook punch. Love it, Mr. Miller. Love it. All right. Up next. Hold on. I'm going to I'm going to add you guys in here for a sec uh, because there's a, there's a reason why I'm going to do this. OK, uh, coming live from the undisclosed location. We have Angelo and AJ today. So Angelo and AJ, this is like a total inside joke. Angelo and AJ, it's your turn. You can get. <laughs> you can get. You can get. You can get. <laughs> All right. Today, guys, how's it going, everybody? Uh, shield and sword. Uh, good, 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 good. Uh, I love this technique. It's a lot of fun to move. Um, being, I'm going to take, again, my approach of being the shorter practitioner and just give you some good tips on how to make this technique kind of work a little bit against a really big tall opponent okay and uh the first part of shield and sword if you notice if i step in and do my block and this guy's got long arms i'm not going to be able to reach his neck because of the length and the shortness of my arm coming up this way so when i do the technique for real i've really got to go up the circle which puts me in a really bad position with that elbow because i'm going to be here he could grab me and do a lot of different things so what I like to do is use the entry from another technique, which we, which we love is here. So as I hit here, I'm gonna go one, boom, and we're gonna go into that position. And then I'm gonna do my strike on the neck, putting my hand in the position, getting a nice line of attack and being right in that position to hit it. So as he comes in, boom, hit, pop, pop. Now I'm starting my technique from here. Now, the next part of this technique, I'm going to keep just like I've always done, and I'm going to hit at a 45-degree angle going down with the elbow. And like Mr. Lawler said, we want to get a nice knee check in there also and make sure that checking hand is here, okay? So let's go on to the next part of this technique. Uh, I also learned it with a middle knuckle rake. I'm not a fan of that either just because it does hurt, and sometimes you get caught up in the uniforms when you're working out. So the other thing, too, is that if I hit this guy hard enough, his elbow – is going to be right here and there's a good chance i'm going to break his elbow and i'm going to break my finger on his elbow because of that situation so that elbow that i threw sorry about that i'm going to go here here pow i'm going to hit him when i drop that elbow his elbow will come in because the human body always retracts towards the pain he's going to come here and if i were to do this i'm going to break my hand which also leads to the second shot if i do this and i kick here I'm going to kick his elbow. And I did have a student in Glendora break their foot on the guy's elbow. So he did the technique. He goes one, two, three. He steps back with that waiter check and shoots that and just broke his foot on his elbow. So because of those errors that I've seen, and again, if you're a dummy or a nookie who is responding properly to the techniques, arms are going to come in. You poke them in the eye, their hands are going to go up. If you hit them here, they're going to have different responses. If you stand here like this, everything is clean and open and you can do whatever you want. So remember, the response is going to dictate your target. So what I do is I'll come in from here, boom, I'll hit to the face. I'm going to do this. I'm going to drop that elbow. From here, I'm going to circle around and I'm going to go directly inside, hitting that kidney with a punch, doing a switch kick in a roundhouse to the leg. Pow, pow. And then I'll cover out from there. Once again, we're going to go one, two, three, four, dropping circle pop out taking the leg out and then doing whatever you're going to do for the cover out so those are kind of my insights on this technique and we're going to throw it to aj and he's going to kind of elaborate on the what ifs of this technique go so what ifs we know a lot of people aren't just going to throw one punch at you okay so we're going to start this almost like we're in a situation more of like a boxing style attack right so what we're going to do, we're going to keep the first entry pretty much the same. The punch comes in. We have our double factor. I like to use the double factor because it gets that arm off the line, okay, crossing that center line a little bit. Now from here, we can land that chop, but one per person, I haven't affected him yet, unless I add some of these insertions that you guys were talking about. As that hook punch comes in, that second hook is a good possibility that's coming in. So I can keep the same technique as I move, and I can actually attack that arm like a five swords block instead of making that chop to the back of the neck so as that comes in we have one two pop and we attack that arm attack the shoulder even okay from here notice i work my way from the back side to the inside 
because that left hand came. So I'm stuck on the inside now. So now I'm in danger of that right hand coming in or left hand coming in. Keeping the same technique, that punch comes in. Uh, we're dropping that elbow, moving in, hitting that forward bow. Uh, now I'm still on the inside. So now we get a little bit of love from Trejo here with our Trejo bridging drills. We're going to get soaked in about two seconds. Okay, so from here, we bring this around. As I step up the circle, there's my hammer or my punch and my kick right there. So one more time before we get rained out. One, two. Include the chop. Punch comes in. We go to the elbow. We bridge as we step up the circle and we get down here. And you can even finish with some of your other cool endings. To finish it. One more time. We have one, two, chop, chop, kick. A little bit of working off a three punch combination, keeping the same movement, same keeping really the same slow. technique, but we're moving inside and outside the box. Cool? You good? Yeah. We're going to get rained on, guys. It's just for the sprinkler. So we'll see you guys next time. Thank you. All right, thank you very much to the Eurythmics. Rare Aiden's <laughs> joke. <laughs> it's terrible. That's terrible. Terrible. Anyway, that's actually another joke. So the joke I made, and that joke I just made, had to do with the fact that Angelo and AJ like to take it upon themselves to tease me for my Philly accent. Now, why is it that they do that? They do that because of our familiar familiarity with each other, because of all the time that we spend together. What time do we spend together? Why, at camps. We spend time at camps. We just got back from Long Beach. The internationals in Long Beach was spectacular. It was absolutely a blast. We had so much fun. If you missed it, we have a few more coming up that I would like to tell you about right now. So first up, next week, Huck Planis is going to be at Saboris. I can't wait. He's doing privates. I booked a private immediately. I've never taken a private lesson with uh, Mr. Planis. I can't wait. I don't know what, there's what I should ask for, which is like, how do you do your rod? How do you do the rod techniques? I don't really want to do that. But then there's what I want to ask for. So we'll see what we're going to do there. But next week, Huck is going to be at uh, Sabora's doing privates on Friday, and he's doing a seminar on Saturday. Can't wait for that. A couple weeks after that, October 1st and 2nd in Dartmouth. That's D A H T dash M I T H, Dartmouth, Massachusetts. The home of Dan Donfro, world-class campo, Laura, international champion. You know, Ray, who's there today. Cheryl, who we all love. And it's also going to have myself and, and Angelo, Sabora, Miller. I mean, there's going to be a bunch of us up there teaching at that event. That'll be October 1st and 2nd. Then two weeks after that, or three weeks after that, here at my house, which for obvious reasons, I'm not going to put the address on the internet, but if you sign up, I'll let you know where the secret. My, uh, here's our West or East Coast undisclosed location. We're doing a seminar at my house. I have six acres. I got plenty of land. We're going to move around. We're going to be swinging sticks. We're going to be doing knives. It's going to be a good time. It's going to be weapons only. And then after that is going to be a pig roast. And the pig roast, for those, those of you who have been there, is always a blast. But wait, there's more. A couple weeks after that, Miami, eleven fourteen. We are going to be down at the uh, Pan Am Internationals. All right, Manny Reyes, senior, former uh, presenter here on the roundtable. That's going to happen again. We know that. I mean, FL Grace is with his presence because we love him. He's such an excellent gentleman. Uh, great post on Facebook a couple days ago, by the way. But anyway, eleven fourteen at uh, his tournament. That's a Sunday. We're going to be doing uh, seminars there as well. All of that information can be found on brotherhoodcampo.com. And if you're friends with Sabor on Facebook, trust me, you'll know because that guy is a promoting machine. Also, if you're interested in getting a little more information about becoming a Brotherhood member, that same web website, brotherhoodcampo.com, has all the information that you're looking for. If you become a member of the Brotherhood, you will get your uh, membership packet, which includes your laminated ID card and your patch and your welcome letter, but you also become uh, a member of the Brotherhood members only page, which uh, I got to be honest with you, I'm not particularly satisfied with my presentation today. So when we're done, I'm going to film a little something extra for the members only. So members only be looking for that a little later today. Um, and I think that rounds out the year. So that's all of our events. Like I said, if you want to be a member of the Brotherhood, 50 bucks a year, it's pretty cheap. And we'll move right along. So our next presenter, my main man, my partner in crime, Mr. Brian Saul. What's up, Brotherhood? How's it going? We've got a beautiful day here in Pennsylvania. So I figured why not come out to another undisclosed location? And if you see my dogs jumping in and out of the scene, I'll just apologize now. 
My first question is, how many people actually kicked someone's elbow and actually broke? So, Angela, you mentioned someone broke a foot. How many times do you think that had to happen before people started going, hey, I think I'm going to kick them in the leg instead? I, I figure that's why that transition occurred. But I think as the book's written, it is uh, to the kidney. Another thing you can do there is hit with a ball of the foot kidney so you don't take it on the top of the foot. You know, take, take a roundhouse kick to the ball of the foot to that kidney. That, that's a very targeted, uh, painful strike. But let's talk about this. Shield and sword. Let's talk context first. So Lorenzo gave some... Um, well, everyone did all these technique categories in relationships. So I figured, hey, I might as well stick with the theme. A lot of our techniques in this in the system are obviously right hand punch te techniques. We work to the outside. You know, we've got, you know, dance of death. We've got flashing wings. We've got sleeper. We've got thundering hammers. You got flash. So we got a billion of those, right? We have off the backhand. We also have um, uh, retreating techniques to the outside, right? We got all sorts of things. So we got to see where does shield and sword fit into all of this, all right? We don't have as many options on the back, on, on the left side, right? Working on the outside of the left arm. So that's where shield and sword starts to fit in. We're on the outside of the arm here. I like to do this just as explained. I like to do it as a double factor, all right? I like to do this as a double factor that stays in the same spirit as what Mr. Lawler taught, kind of the punching over the punch uh, and chalk uh, straight into the face. Um, I like to do this as a double factor, load this up, all right? Um, right from here, same thing, you know, you got your chop, you got your elbow, you're gonna come out. I do this as a hammering strike, raking across the, uh, the kidney to end it before you go to that other shot. So if on the left side we're stepping up, and I know Lorenzo kind of worked in and out of the arm, but we didn't talk about, is there any retreating on the outside of the left arm? What techniques do we have where we retreat on the outside of the left arm? One of them got alluded to, we got re uh, repeating mace, right? So now you have retreating and advancing techniques on the outside of the right. And now you've filled in that left side of the category as well. You've got advancing and retreating techniques on the outside of the left. If you pair that with the in and out that Lorenzo talked about, you've got almost your full complement of, uh, of moves. Um, so let's talk about that. So that's one way to look at it in terms of technique. Let's put it in a boxing. AJ was talking some boxing. For anybody who boxes, right, if you've ever slipped under a, a hook, you know, someone shoots a hook and you're slipping under, stepping to the side. For those that know the Trejo slip drill, it's part of that. Okay, you end up in a similar position. And this is what we call a false lead in boxing, right? The reason we call it a false lead is because I don't know, you can't really tell if this is my jab and this is my right, or if this is my jab and this is my cross, all right? It, it could go either way. So um, that's why they call this a false lead here. So you can put it in that context as well. The last part, and I don't know how I'm doing on time here, so I'm just going to go another minute or two. Um, and, and Dan talked about this at first, is you can look at your patterns of your technique. This is exactly parting wings. It's exactly parting wings, okay? You, but if you also look at it, you can see that this position is also other places on other planes. Looks familiar here, right? So instead of working on a vertical line now, right, in thundering hammers where you're loaded, you know, right? Now in shield and sword, we're working more on that horizontal line this way, coming in here before we shoot off. Now to tie it into thundering hammers a little bit further, and Mr. Lawler also talked about this, you got to make sure that your legs are not separated from your upper body. After you hit these, okay, these are knee shots, just like you had in thundering hammers where you're always driving those knees. Those knees are here just the same. Apply these as strikes, not just as checks before you come out. Last thing I'm going to say is this one, two. We have a lot of examples in the system where you're kind of penting up and building up energy to release it. And this is another example of that. Okay, so after you hit this, when you unwind from this into the roundhouse kick, the, the, this should feed this one, two. Don't allow there to be a break and then strike. You see that in the extension to uh, lone kimono. All right, you see that in the extension to 
crossing talon, right? You bring them down, you, you flip them over and you follow them, follow them straight down. So you see that theme of following the strike with the kick without that loss of momentum as a common theme throughout. So I've probably gone more than five, so I'm gonna stop there, turn it back to you, Dan, and thank you everyone. Great to see everyone. So let's talk about this for a sec. I'm going to guess conservatively that let's go conservative. Let's say 75% of the lessons that I've taken over the last, say, 25 years, I was standing next to Brian and we were demonstrating. We were beating each other up the whole time. All right. And uh, Mr. Parker called it infinite insights into Kempo. How is it that me and this dude have been doing all of our Kempo together for basically all of our lives, yet I never thought of what he just said there? That's how diverse Kempo is. You know, part of the reason why I put myself first is so that Brian didn't take any of the stuff that I wanted to say, and he can be stuck with what I took that was his. And he came up with all sorts of new stuff. That's a testament to Kempo. It's also a testament to having an excellent training partner. All right, let's move right along. <laughs> Our next presenter, Dan Donfro. What can I say about Dan Donfro? All I'm going to say is that it was super duper cool a couple weeks ago when we were in Long Beach on the Friday night line watching Dan Donfro bang out his techniques and uh, demonstrate his extensive knowledge of this system that we teach. And uh, an excellent representation of that will be the uh, international champion that he's going to be demonstrating with. So many of you guys all know and love, we all love Laura. Dan Donfro, Laura, and I think it's Ray. Is that Ray? Oh, That's just right. Brian in there. <laughs> Sorry, let's try this again. Dan Donfro! All right, thank you, Mr. Mech. So yeah, um, I've been lucky lately with these round tables and I've been going near the beginning. So <laughs> we've had to change our game plan, I don't know what, three times as we've been watching. Uh, you know, we were gonna go with the parting wings and then right off the bat, Mr. Mech, you, you ran through that one. <laughs> and uh, yeah, a bunch of them we've already done. And then we almost made it right to the end. And then Mr. Brian Saul, thank you for elaborating on thundering hammers, but it's a little late to change the game plan now. So anyway, let me show you the way that we do shield and sword here in the school when we teach the technique. And again, you guys brought up points that I always explain to everybody. You know, if you read the manual, the kick goes to the kidney, but well, most of the time you're going to kick them in the elbow and you're going to hurt your foot. All right. So we go to the back of the knee a lot. And also the middle knuckle rake. Some of us do the middle knuckle rake. Some of us do the full hammer fist rake. Everything that you guys were saying is stuff that I say to the adults. You're going to see it this way. You're going to read it this way. But we teach it this way. So anyway, when we do the technique, we all, all have these guys demonstrate. So the first move, one, two, three, four, five, and six. Boom. And there it is. So one more time. Shield and sword. One, two, three, four, Five, six, bam, and there it is. So we'll have a few of these guys demonstrate it. Miss Laura, why don't you shield and sword? That's it. You'll notice I, I like to do it against the jab because the step through punch, again, you know, when I'm teaching it to the, per, to the blue belt technique, yeah, when I'm teaching it to the purple belts, um, you know, it's easy to do against a step through punch because you know it's coming and you can work on slipping it and getting that block. But uh, Mr. Ray, we'll change the angle. And break it. And there it is. All right, shield and sword. So now to elaborate a little bit on what uh, Mr. Saul was saying not just two minutes ago is uh, its relationship to Thundering Hammer. And again, we were going to use parting wings first, but somebody already did that. So uh, Mr. Ray, come on over. See, we have a couple of bodies. We can make it look a little bit more uh, spectacular, I guess. So you'll do thundering hammers and I'll do shield and sword. You got one, two, three, four, five, and six. Again, you want to see that ready? Go one and two, three, four, five, six. There it is. All right. So now you got the base technique the way we do it. We had a little bit of uh kind of a motion relationship there, not so much the application, but the motion. Now, looking at the technique, um, a couple of things that I worry about is the jab, all right? Two things are gonna happen with this jab. Number one, the jab's not just gonna stay out there. 
He throws the jab. I slip it. You can leave it out there. And yeah, look at this. I can bang the technique. Sweet. Got it. All right, but the problem is the jab sticks. All right, so he's going to be sticking the jab. So I, oh, now what? I'm probably looking at this right cross. Boom. Okay. So what I'm going to do is, again, you know, this isn't necessarily shield and sword. This is just taking the idea of shield and sword and changing it up a little bit. So I'll do it slow. What I'm going to do, and again, um, who was it? It was um, Michael Miller talked about this double factor first. And then I think actually Angelo touched on it also. A few of you guys did. So I could use the double factor here. But then what I want to do is hook this. So as he pulls it back, come a little bit closer. So again, I could double factor right into a hook. And then bang, instead of going to the neck, I'm going to go whack right into the back of the shoulder. And we were practicing that last week. And yeah. It doesn't feel very good. All right. So you can go with the double factor or you can just go with the regular block. So I'm here. Bam. But I just want to put, I want to put a hook on this and I want to hit to keep this from coming around. And then seeing I'm here with Ray, I'm just going to go to the head with this elbow strike and then bang right to the back of the neck with the hammer. Boom. To the back of the neck. So again, I got one. Bam. Two. I can hit the kidney. As opposed to the back of the neck again, and then go to the back of the knee. So let's bring Brightman in. So I'm here, bam, boom, pow. Whoops, I missed the shoulder. So again, here, pop, bam, boom, hit. And there it is. So just changing up the targets a little bit. Still the idea of shield and sword, but slightly quite different. <laughs> so anyway. Coming from World Class Karate Academy in Dartmouth, Massachusetts. Mr. Ray, jump in there. Thank you to these three. And look forward to seeing everybody down there. First weekend in October. Back to you, Dan Mack. Listen, I can't wait, my man. I can't wait. Shout out to Brightman, by the way. I didn't give Brightman a shout out. Good to see you, my friend. Ray, Laura, Dan, excellent, excellent, excellent job. Love it, love it, love it. All right. Moving right along, our next presenter. I'll tell you this, I'm very, very excited to watch uh, Rebecca Knight's presentation because, you know, being that we're all in this world of Kempo, uh, you hear a lot of names, you know. Oh, I heard of that person. Oh, I heard of that. Oh, I, heard of that. Oh, I heard of that person. Before. You ever heard of that person? No, oh, I heard of that person. Well, this guy's from there, right? Well, I heard of Rebecca Knight many, many, many years ago, and uh, I know of her reputation, all right, but I haven't seen it for myself. So I'm really, really looking forward to it. Another thing that I think should go uh, not be left unsaid, you know, is that the Brotherhood, uh, a bunch of us in the Brotherhood, you guys know we were very, very close to Frank Trejo. We make no bones about that. You know, we waved the Trejo flag and uh, we were very proud to continue to promote uh, Frank Trejo and, and how he taught the art. Well, uh, another very well-respected senior one of the original members of the American Kempo Senior Council was Mr. Steve Labani, who uh, unfortunately uh, passed away. And uh, much like how we are carrying the flag for Frank Trejo, uh, Sean and Rebecca Knight are carrying the flag and representing their lineage rather nicely. So I just want to give a shout out to you guys for that. And now if uh, Miss Knight could just unmute. Well, is everybody unmuted? No. Oh, right there we go. There. <laughs> there it is. Rebecca Knight, welcome to the round table. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for having me. It's an honor to be here with you guys today. And I appreciate you mentioning Sigung the Bounty. Every class we teach is a tribute to him. Every time we're on the mats, we echo his teachings. And I'd like to especially tribute this to him as his birthday. He would have been 79 on the 19th of this month. So this is for you, Sigung. Um, I'm also very honored to be here on the first edition that features the ladies of Kenpo. It's about time and we're ready to rock. We have amazing mentors. We have amazing coaches. We have amazing training partners. And it's time we get in the spotlight just a little bit. So um, before I get started, one of those amazing coaches and partners is my husband. He had an opportunity to present last time. He is my primary teacher and the best bad guy I could ask for. So I'll bring him in in a second. But first, I'd like to run the technique in the air a couple times. I'll look back on up. So we all know the basic move, but I'm going to highlight some of the details. That punch comes in, we move off the line, and we lock that forward bow. Neutral bow in check, 
We bring that check in with that wide heel. I move up the circle, check rotate, roundhouse, and then I get my distance from my opponent. So one more time, I move off that line, forward, neutral, with knee, check, up the circle, and then we cover. So I have a saying when I teach my students, if you're gonna do very little, you need to do it very well. In case you haven't noticed, I'm very little. So everything I do needs to be spot on if I wanna have the ability to make my tempo effective. So the first thing we're gonna do is isolate the individual pieces. One of the common mistakes I see my students do, and I've been in the past, is when I step off the line, they don't go to a forward bow. They feel neutral bow is good enough. What they don't realize is they're exposing their center line, third point of that triangle, and that forward bow gives them that bracing angle. It also sets the hip to rotate for the follow-up strikes. They've done this before. It's great to remind them. They move off the line for other techniques. They've done it with contact penetration. They've also done it with contact manipulation from that neutral to forward bow. So it doesn't matter how it's applied, it's a tool that the students can utilize. So I also remind my students, I'm ADD and OCD, which means everything has to be perfect, but not for very long. It also means I'm good at finding patterns. It's one of the teaching tools that I utilize along the way. So I'm going to bring Mr. Knight on in, and we're going to talk about how this is a mini clinic in rotation. So I'll put Mr. Knight on this side. So when that punch comes in, I move off the line. First thing I'm utilizing, locking that forward bow, is counter rotation. My hips are moving away from that block. So again, I move off the line, counter rotation. I also remind my students, block at or above the elbow, because as he bends, elbows are not delicious. So here we go. I'm off the line, counter rotation. From that counter rotation, I'm going to have synchronous, synchronous rotation for two strikes. One, two. I really like ribs. We like to ask the kids what's for dinner. The proper response, ribs. So here we go. Move off the line, counter, synchronous. They might have three. They're synchronous, but they're not on opposing sides. They're all on the same sides. And then I cover. So I'm getting the idea if I break it down one at a time, just by the rotation principle, see it comes in, counter rotation, same side rotation, but on opposing like a washing machine. Now I'm going to utilize that check, break, roundhouse, and to cover. Thank you, Mr. Knight, for the moment. Now I remember one of my first classes with Seagun, and he was walking around coaching the students, and he came up to me and he called me Miss Rebecca. He goes, Miss Rebecca, you're so sweet. And I was flattered. And I was like, oh, thank you, Seagum. And in his gruff voice, he goes, I hate sweet. Sweet does not get the job done. And he was right. So when I teach my students, especially if they're smaller, they need to be sharper. That check is not a check. It's a weapon. That rake is going to go through the kidney. And I like to use a focus roundhouse, the ball of the foot. Why? It's sharper. It's meaner. And there's less opportunity. I've taken a lot of elbows to the top of the foot. I don't like that either. This is my workaround. Now, I'm a little bit on the flexible side. Big bad guy, no problem. But some of my students need to utilize a downward roundhouse. they got kickboxing experience. They're more comfortable. And I make sure they have that opportunity as well. So that's how we do it. One, two, and then three when we're dealing with the rotation. But that's not the timing of how you'd ideally perform the technique. One, two, three, one, two, three. I was a music major in college, and I had the opportunity to pursue my dream as a martial arts instructor or a piano teacher. You can kind of see which direction I went, but it's still something that's in the back of the my, my mind. It's something that's a tool that I utilize when I analyze my Kempo technique. So let's work the proper timing that I'd have my students do. So we're doing it here first, and I'll bring in here tonight. So we're reminded we want mineral time between our first block and our first strike. And we also know this technique is named after our first defensive motion and our first offensive counter. So we're gonna do three things. One, two, three, then three things. One, two, three, and then we cover. So one more time, then I'll do it with Mr. Knight because hitting him is way more fun than watching me do this in the air. So three things. One, two, three, three things. One, two, three. Of course, without the dramatic pause in between, just for teaching purposes. We'll bring Mr. Knight on in. 
Well, same thing with that timer. One, two, three. One, two, three. And for her out. Once more, mostly because I just want to hit him again. <laughs> so here we go. One, two, three. One, two, three. Thank you, All right, in closing, I would like to make sure that I always make sure that everyone knows my teacher, my lineage, Sigang Stephen Labounty, my primary teacher, Mr. Sean Knight. And I'd like to give a special shout out to Mr. Bob White, who is celebrating his 50th year of his first degree black belt today. So thank you so much for having me. It was great to be here. I mean, listen, you have a really good reputation, and I think that doesn't do you justice. Holy cow! I'm not kidding. That was spectacular. Like, uh, uh, I'm Jakey behind the scenes. During the round table, Brian Saul's constantly texting me. Brian Saul's constantly texting me. And Brian Saul was echoing the same sentiment as I was sitting here going like this. You are a professional, talented, and that roundhouse kid, come on now. That was spectacular. Thank you very much, Rebecca. We want to see you again for sure. God damn, I'm sorry. That was spectacular. All right. Huh. Now that we got that out of the way. I think he liked your presentation. Yeah, it's spectacular. I mean, that presentation was amazing. You know, the, 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 the external focus. Yeah, excellent, excellent, excellent. So for my, my first impression. All right, so now, now our final presenter. Our final presenter. So I want to share with you a story. I was going to share another story, but I think I'm going to save that one for just me and Gail and Mark. But anyway, the first time I ever saw Gail Bang Kempo was about, I don't know, maybe four or five years after I met Gail. Met Gail. Sabor posted a picture yesterday of Ed Parker Jr., Joe Palonzo, uh, Huck Planis, and Frank Trejo. That picture was taken the same weekend that I met Gail for the first time you know, in like 92. And then I didn't see her uh, perform really until like 97, 98, when she destroyed self-defense division at Dennis Nackard's tournament. She absolutely destroyed. I mean, what do you see? She's super duper soft-spoken. She's possibly the kindest person I've ever met in my life. But man, oh man, man, oh man, when you see her bang out these techniques, it's really something to behold. The scores came out. It was like, Nine three, which was like back then. Nine three was like gigantic, right? Nine three, holy cow! Nine three, nine three, nine nine, nine two, nine three, nine nine was Mark Lawler. He taught me a lesson about being a smart husband that day. All right, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, it really is an honor to present such a good friend, Miss Gail Lawler. Yeah. All right, thank you everybody. Thank you, Dan, for that big introduction. <laughs> and it was nice to see another woman out there on the field. Rebecca, great job. I'm an honor to be here today to present for the Brotherhood. A lot of uh, the brothers are good friends, so thank you again. Um, so we're talking about the technique shield and sword. Um, as my husband Mark did earlier, if I was uh, as tall as my opponent or um, uh, the same height as them, I'm just going to use Zach here for a second as that jab would come. I would go ahead off of that ricochet uh, block, do a punch, gouge the eye, checking above the arm there, above the elbow. But as you can see with my short height, it, I'm not gonna get a whole lot here um, from my hand sword. So I like to change up the technique a little bit, um, using Mr. Parker's formula for fighting, trying to use his power principles of marriage of gravity, torque, and backup mat. And I'm gonna use my uh, boxing background, which is uh, taking my head out of the way so it doesn't get hit first. So as, that, uh, as I use Zach here again to demonstrate, as that punch comes, I'm gonna go ahead and slip, go out of the way, go checking that leg with my knee. Yeah. So that we're really blocking here, okay? Going right into preparing my next weapon, striking down with that hand sword, contouring the back of the neck there to get some to come down. With that backup mask, break it through with that, sh that elbow. Good, as you can see, we're ready for the next shot. And this reminds me of repeating mace here. We're gonna go into a kidney shot back fist. 
you know, at that state here, I could go into like circles of destruction, like some of you had mentioned, but from here, what I'm gonna do, and Mark's just gonna take a second to walk around to the other side so you can see a little bit better. Good. So from this back knuckle here, we're gonna catch the arm. You'll recognize this from wings of soap coming up under the arm to get a little bit of uh, pressure there. Good, into our snaking town strike. Good, from here we could take Zach to the ground, go into like leap of death, ending or dance of death. But I'm gonna go ahead and take it into that wrist lock, taking him to the ground. From this position, you notice we got piercing winds. We're gonna drop with the knee, but which is not a very pleasant. Good, bracing that across my knee here, jam that shoulder back, good. Moving up the circle, good, straight behind that elbow, or sorry, by the elbow, stomp to the face, clear, kick, sweep, and then stomp to the available target as we clear out. Sorry, I ran off the camera. <laughs> so that's my take on how I would handle shield or sword for myself. Back up a little, um, Gail, so we can get you in the frame. Okay. One so more. Right, sorry. Just working out the camera angle. <laughs> so we're just going to take a little bit more up to speed here this time. All right, here we go. Okay. I lost that one. <laughs> Exactly. Fire it off one more time. Okay. We're a little slippery because we're sweating, but we're going to do it one more time. <laughs> okay. Here we go. From that step. Thank you, Zach. Zach, 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 I would like to promote you to blue belt. <laughs> <laughs> so, sorry, I hope that came across okay. That's my take on shield and sword. Again, thank you. Good God. Uh, right. So, uh, so, you know, for those of you who, who, who haven't seen Gail in action before, now you see exactly what I'm talking about. It's the dichotomy of the super pleasant kind, soft, docile presentation of, and then you're going to destroy his shoulder, and then you're going to hyperextend his elbow, and then you're going to stomp his head. <laughs> Backed up by the movement afterwards. You see what I'm saying? How can somebody so nice turn around and look so mean? I love it. I love it, Gail. What can I say? I've enjoyed watching you bang compo techniques for since back in the day known as the 90s, because that's back in the day now. Thank you very much, Mr. Gale. And uh, congratulations, Zach, on your promotion. You earned it. <laughs> All right. So now that takes us to the end. That takes us to the end. We have one last thing to do. We have one last thing to do. And that is to, uh, we have passed the mic. All right. Pass the mic we do at the end of every presentation. All of our presenters will take about 30 seconds, roughly. You guys know what kind of time we have. You know, 30 seconds brotherhood time, we'll call it. Every group calls it whatever time. This person time, that person time. When I was in the Philippines, everyone was saying Filipino time. Well, it's brotherhood time. So it's 30 brotherhood seconds. All right. And I'm first. So I uh, I want to um, reiterate what uh, Rebecca and Sean were saying about uh, Bob White. I had the opportunity to uh, Spent a little bit of time with uh, Mr. White in uh, Long Beach and uh, actually had the opportunity to judge International Forms Grand Championships with Bob White as the center judge and Larry King Geica as the other side ref. So just that alone, I felt super duper cool, you know, because, uh, you know, Bob White's a legend in the art. So uh, Mr. Bob White, salute to you on your 50 years. All right, moving right along. We're going to send it right back to Kenneth Square. Mr. Mark Lawler. What a great day of presentations. Always a pleasure to do this. And uh, Rebecca, great job out there. Great seeing another lady out there. Sean, good to see you again. Um, uh, what's, what else to say? This is, continues to be an excellent forum for people to get together and do Kempo and do their 
variations and, and different takes on the techniques. That's what makes Kempo great. And um, that's what we're bringing to the table here. So um, I think that's all I got for today. Dan, we can go to the next person. All right. Thank you very much. We're going to throw it over to Spain and Lorenzo. Hey, 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 Lorenzo, turn your camera on. Thank you so much, my friend. It's a pleasure, as all the time. Uh, Guy and Rebecca, thank you so much to share your tempo with us. And uh, we need more, more the gear in the, in, the, uh, in, the, uh, in the presenter, okay? So thank you so much. Uh, and we continue with the party, okay? Now it's time to the dinner. Thank you so much. Ciao. Ciao. Enjoy, Lorenzo. All right. We're of throw course. It down to a whole lot of good looking in Florida with Monte. Yes. Thank you very much. I want to thank my brother, Tony, for allowing me to come and do the technique with him. Uh, and uh, we always say uh, our organization, I always go over it again and again. It is a great mind alliance of Kimpo. Bunch of great minds give shit. Look, look what happened today. Look at the knowledge that you you get. And uh, Miss Gail, Miss Rebecca, thank you so much. It's a great honor for uh, for you to be with us today. Um, just join in with us, you guys. It's fifty bucks a year. You got hundreds, over four hundred now, probably four hundred fifty or more uh, worth of videos, uh, reviewing techniques. You can share yours. We can debate all kinds of stuff on our uh, on our side. It's it's just a great a great uh, thing. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Monty. I will add on our members only site over the last couple of weeks, John Van Cleve has put a couple of videos of uh, Ed Parker seminars uh, from King of Prussia, Pennsylvania back in the eighties. So there's a lot of really, really cool stuff. That latest video that uh, Van Cleve put up is pretty cool. And there's going to be a pretty sweet one from me soon. Throwing it over to my man, Mr. Michael Lick Miller. All right, great work today, everybody. As always, good stuff. Uh, uh, Mrs. Knight, Mrs. Lawler, thank you guys. You guys did awesome. We appreciate you. And uh, it's always good to see my good friend, uh, Mr. Tony Capone. Good to see you, brother. Uh, moving very well, my hey, friend. Gotcha. You got it, brother. And um, and to my buddy Lorenzo, I hope you're going to have some cervezas or some vino with that dinner, brother. All right. Salute. When you want, hey. my friend. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mr. Miller. Let's take it over to the undisclosed location. Hey, guys, you can get What's happening, guys? Just want to thank you guys. Uh, ladies of Kempo were phenomenal. That was a beautiful presentation. I'm very awesome. proud of you guys. Uh, thank you for joining us, and thank you for helping us out today. Um, a real quick out prayers to all the, the family and all the victims of 9-11. Today's your day, and we're, you know, we're there for you, but uh, we love you guys. Awesome stuff today, seeing all the different varieties. Picked up a few different things that we're going to start playing with a little bit. And, uh, yeah, awesome stuff today. It's always a pleasure. I learn Very something impressive. every time. So, cheers. 100-degree 100, 100 weather in L.A. <laughs> Thank you very much, Angelo and AJ. Throw it over to Brian Saw. Well, it's a beautiful sunny and 70 degrees here in PA. Sorry, Angelo and AJ. Anyway, um, Miss Rebecca and Miss Gail, wow, you guys blew me away. Fantastic job. I'm, it was amazing. Really awesome. Mark Lawler, Sean Knight, I'm so sorry. I'm just going to leave it at that. I'm just going to say I'm sorry. Great job seeing all my brothers, all the variations, everything. And I'm so glad everyone came out. If you're not joining, if you're not a member yet, please do. It's only like five bucks a month. And as we're, Monty, we're over 500 videos on our members only page. All right. Good to see everyone. Back to you. Thank you very much, Mr. Saul. Now we're going to throw it up to Dartmouth. All right. You know, great stuff today. Awesome presentations with everybody, especially Miss Rebecca and Miss Gail. That was phenomenal. I really enjoyed watching that stuff. And, uh, you know, once again, great job, everybody. And, uh, you know, thoughts and prayers to the 9 uh, 11 families, as well as Mr. Steve Stewart, and Mr. Sabura Chan's families. I hope everything's okay. And uh, I'm thinking of you guys. Move it on. All right. Moving right along yeah. to. Rebecca! <laughs> Ladies yeah. of Kempo. 
right. Once I can figure out how to unmute myself. Here we go. All right. Thank you guys again for having me. It's an honor to be here. I love watching other martial artists move, and I love even more watching other martial artists think their way through those moves and explain their thought processes. So that was wonderful for me to see. Great to be with other ladies. Good job. Um, and I also want to make sure that everyone knows we're having a big camp going on. We do this every year. Last year was an exception. We have a winter training camp with uh, Mr. Sepulveda, who we lovingly call the Sepulvenator. And Mr. Wedlake, his nickname is Uncle Lethal. I think he likes it. Um, and the last thing is, it's first, first weekend in December, the 3rd, 4th, and 5th. And the last thing is we are celebrating our school's 20th anniversary this month. So we're super excited to keep doing what we love, and we hope to have 20 more. Thanks for having me. That's awesome. Congratulations, guys. Congratulations. Excellent. And then now back over to Kenneth Square for Gail. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, everyone. This was truly an honor. And I'm thinking so much about everybody on this 9-11 um, commemorative day. Um, it was a great honor again. We had a great time and good to see a lot of my friends here in the Brotherhood. An honor to be a sister in the Brotherhood. <laughs> so we look forward to seeing you all again, hopefully soon. Thank you. And to my instructor, Mr. Mark Waller, and to Zach. A great dookie. <laughs> so thanks again. Have a great day. All right. Thank you very much, everybody. That is all for today. We will see you again. Uh, if we don't see you next week at Saboris or a couple weeks after that at Don Froze, we'll see you back here in, I, I don't even know who's the guest for October. I, I don't remember. I have to take a look and see. But I'm pretty sure it's somebody awesome. All right. Thank you very much, everybody. Have a lovely day. We'll see you. Bye. Thank, Thank you, guys. guys. Thank you.